Going on a road trip, huh? Yeah. On a tour of America's most famous UFO hotspots. I hear that. I cannot believe we're going to see Area 51. I'm Paul. <laughs> what have you done to him? He fainted. Yeah, but you made him faint. But it's not like I set my phaser to faint. You've got a phaser? Oh, God. So let's talk about Paul. Yeah. Um, alien comedy road movie. I was trying to squeeze in one more genre. Buddy movie. <laughs> buddy movie. Buddy movie, surfer flick. Right on. Right on. With, 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 a, with, a, with a religious spike to it. Yeah, with a little bit of a theological bent to it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Was that an easy sell to you, or, or were you on board from the get-go? Um, I do or like a tough things. <laughs> I, do, I, do, I do like things that are kind of cross genre. I mean, it's a little tricky with comedy because it needs to first and foremost be a comedy. It needs to be funny. But I tried to have my cake and eat it too, and stop in places for this movie for a little bit of the magic that um, one might feel in the kind of movies that the film's referencing. I mean, there's all these references to E.T. and Close Encounters and other classic sci-fi films from the 70s and 80s. And, you know, I wanted some of the moments, especially toward the end of the film, to have some of that impact with the music and the way it looks. It's sort of, in my mind, it starts as a gritty road movie comedy and turns into a Hollywood film by the end of it. Now, I, I love how you guys bring awareness to Comic-Con. Um, had you been to Comic-Con before? I went to Comic-Con with Superbad and we had the greatest screening I've ever had of a movie there. Um, it was the most enthusiastic. It was like having a rock concert. And uh, I, as a kid, I was a huge comic book sci-fi nerd and I used to go to comic conventions at Madison Square Garden in New York to like meet Marvel artists and DC artists that I, I worshipped and get their autographs and talk to them because I wanted to be, I actually wanted to be a, a comic book artist when I was a kid. And then as I got older, you know, I was sort of in the gap. The comic world, the world of the fanboy wasn't as powerful um, in the 80s and 90s. And then it had this giant surge that has eaten culture alive, um, which I think is great. Now, have you done that, the trek that these guys go on, you know, that, that, that looks like the whole alien adventure trek, you know, from Area 51 and the, the, I guess the, the black used to, the, what used to be the black mailbox. And. Unfortunately, I missed out on that because I they did that trip while they were researching the script, and I met them not long after they did the trip. So, it I, I would have you know because they're soft because they're actors. They had a driver. <laughs> if I had done it, I would have insisted that we do the. No, I'm sure I would have said, yeah, driver sounds good. That's funny. <laughs> you should say you you know you just spilled the beans because they they made it seem like it was just the two of them. You know, yeah. kind of going no. out on the road and no. doing the adventure. No. BS, right? I think, yeah. <laughs> Although the advantage of having a driver is you can be a little bit drunk the entire time. And uh, so that's fun. Um, so, yeah, I missed out on that. But um, once we got onto, you know, we shot the whole movie in New Mexico. When we, once we were there, it felt appropriately like I was living there their road trip. <laughs> we, it was one of those movies where nobody ever went to their trailers. Uh, we all hung out on set. We all stood in the sun getting horrible, you know, melanomas all day and uh and uh no just but that's enormous, what they wanted that's they, what they wanted yeah yeah they wanted they, they didn't want to deal with the elements sun was okay but no rain according no to rain yes me. but if i discovered there's a reason that the desert is sparsely populated because the weather is harsh yeah <laughs> it thunderstorms and hails in the middle of july every 20 minutes it's crazy it's like you feel like it's the armageddon every day in the in southwest but it's gorgeous now now their 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 comedy is is unique, you know. It's um, and I'm curious, uh, is it is it a is it a do you direct I guess a different way because Super Bad is so different from Adventureland and Adventureland is so different from Paul, and Paul is so different from the other two, you know. When you're when you're uh, you're doing comedy, um, is it just let the guys go and and you know you kind of know how you want to go from A to B or. Um, I mean, I definitely tried to get inside their style. I hadn't done anything with that amount of pop culture reference in it before. What I really loved about their the things they had done before this was I felt that sometimes people do pop culture references just for the sake of it, um, just to say, hey, we all know the same movies. But they're doing it in a way that I feel unique to them. I mean, I, I keep saying it's like a mashup 
Kanye West thing or something or uh, or Danger Mouse. Right. Uh, they, they like take it, <laughs> they put it in their own personal blender and spit it back out again. I mean, sometimes they don't even remember. They do it unconsciously. There are lines in the movie that people say, is that a reference to this? And they go, oh yeah, I guess it is. I didn't occur to me. Like it's just so part of what they absor absorb and love. And when I read the script, it was so clearly a love letter. I mean, it was very sincere. There was nothing cynical about it. It was like saying, you know, we're trying to make a throwback movie. We're addressing that yeah. in the style, in the references. We're not pretending that we're, you know, breaking incredible new ground. We're just trying to make a film that we think would be really fun, yeah. that we'd like to see. And, uh, and I, as a guy who grew up on a lot of comic books and sci-fi and saw Star Wars, I was 12 when Star Wars came out. I'm old enough that I actually remember when it was brand new, and it, yeah, changed my life. I mean, it's probably the first thing that made me seriously think about wanting to be a director. Um, so, uh, you know, so I tried to get inside their heads, but also at the same time not emulate Edgar Wright's directing style, because he's brilliant, and I love Edgar's style, but I, I could never do it as well as he could, so I thought, well, I'll go my own way, and I'll push it more of a kind of a classic, sort of a low-budget classic road movie that, like I said, slowly starts to drop in elements of things you might see in the movie that their characters would see in their head. Right. Like when the bad guys enter the movie, suddenly the style shifts a little bit. It's a little slicker. Right. And then I think the sort of slicker stuff with the bad guys meets the handheld road movie stuff. They kind of crash together in the third act and it becomes, you know, a movie with spaceships and sweeping scoring, sweeping score and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I love that's That was uh, one of the parts that I, that I really, really loved. Um, and for me, it was kind of an education because I didn't know about some of the, you know, the, you know, I'm, I, I like sci-fi, but I'm not a I'm not a huge. You, you know, don't know no, every don't know single. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, well, we we wanted it to be a movie that could work for everybody. That that people wouldn't just sit there and go, "Well, I feel like I'm being told I'm not cool because I don't know this." The references we wanted to just drop in there for people to notice or not, and not ever stop the story or put big quotation marks around it. So, you know, it is a slightly different experience for people who would know every single line of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. But I liked, you know, what I I'm really pleased that like we screen this movie and women like it as much as men because oh, I think yeah. it's a very sweet film. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a ride. It's a good ride. Yeah, it's like you know we didn't have a giant budget. We can't compete with a giant blockbuster spectacle film. But sometimes when you scale everything down again, you know, little things take on a different, you know, they have a bigger impact. Like having a spaceship show up at the end of a yeah. lower budget film, it's suddenly, we've seen a million spaceships, but it's, it kind of makes it new again, I hope, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and there's a lot of great wink winks in there. I don't want to give anything away, but, you know. Yeah, we got some pretty great cameos. Um, a very famous, one of, legendary director does a vocal cameo in the film. I don't want to spoil the surprise, but, you know. A, a towering uh, artist yes. of our time. Yes, yes. Yeah, that was wild to meet that guy. That's awesome. Well, congratulations on the film, man. Thank you. you. Know, best success, lots of success at the box office. You Thank know, you. Have fun tonight. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Yeah. It'll be a blast. Don't worry, I got it all under control. Ah! Hey, what, hey, what are you doing? Just watch. It's a miracle. Oh. Oh. Mm. Why would you do that? I'm not going to eat a dead bird, am I? <laughs> oh.